Yeah, well, um, solid, good bounce back. I thought our energy was so much better than it was against Wright State the other night. Um, so it took a lot of positives from that. Our effort was better. I thought our identity, uh, we were a little back to our identity. Um, kind of knew the way Niagara was going to play coming into this, which is somewhat similar um, just with their ability to turn people over. So a little disappointed in our turnovers. That would be the one thing that stick, comes to mind pretty quickly is we need to value the ball a little bit better than that um, for sure. Um, but yeah, shared it, spread it around. Um, thought we handled their full court pressure than we did their half court pressure. I thought we didn't do as good of a job in the half court as I would have liked handling it. Um, but all in all, yeah, I got a lot of people involved, a lot of people minutes, spread it around, got to score it. So that looks pretty good. So um, I guess really turnovers and then shooting the three wasn't very good tonight. So we had some open looks that we did not convert. Um, but other than that, yeah, to finish the semester 11-0, and 0, pretty good. I think it was the four, only the fourth time, right, in school history that, that any team has started 11-0. and 0. That's hard to do. Um, wasn't sure, uh, honestly, when we were here months ago, if this is where we would be sitting and, and be undefeated at the time. But uh, the kids have done a great job. They're a pleasure to coach. And uh, we much deserve four or five days off. So um, yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays um, from all of us to yours out there. And uh, we'll catch our breath. And then we'll uh, turn, it, turn our attention to Big 12 play. Talking about balance between doing it on the offensive and defensive end, 32 turnovers forced, but you also reached the 100-point mark. I feel like that's able to kind of be a good sign that you can do it both ways heading into what is now conference play. Yeah, we. I mean, we. Yeah, we. I think it was 25 steals too on those 32 turnovers. So steals are live ball turnovers, um, and those are thing. Those are the ones that we chart and that we want even more than just to throw it out of bounds turnover. It allows us to get in the open floor, use our speed and our quickness, where I think we're pretty good. Um, and honestly, I didn't think we even converted at, at the rate that we probably could be capable of. So still something that, yeah, we're going to probably turn people over, maybe not this much, you know, going into the Big 12. Um, but it's still even cleaning some stuff up in the open floor would be a little bit better. But, um, you know, one of the goals was to attack the paint. We did that. I don't know if this was a season high or not, but I think it was like 66, yeah, 66 points in the paint. is That's a lot of points at the rim. Coach, you've obviously coached through conference seasons before. You've coached against other Big 12 teams before. But now this first opportunity to kind of do it from here on out, game after game. Uh, what about that, you know, kind of grabs your interest and, and, you know, going through it for the first time? Yeah, well, just the, the depth of the league, you know. I mean, it's a little different at the mid-major level where, you know, there's nights where you can probably look at a preseason schedule and figure out, hey, here's some runs. Or, if, you know, if we take care of business, we should be able to string some wins together. You know, you look at the Big 12 schedule and you're like, ooh, where does that – you know, where's that run going to come? Um, because it's quality opponent after quality opponent. So, you know, that's what it'll be different. I, I don't, I mean, conference plays, conference play. I always think it's hard to win on the road in conference play, regardless of what league you're in. So that has my full attention. Go, you know, going on the road in the Big 12 is going to be extremely difficult. And then you got to protect your home court, too. So, you know, can you, if you can protect your home court and steal some games here and there on the road, then you put yourself in a position, you know, for postseason and, you know, a seed in the Big 12 tournament and then hopefully the NCAA tournament. And going 11 and 0 early helps all of that as well. So we did what we needed to do in the in the non-conference, and now we got to go try to take care of business here in the Big 12. Share some insight on what the film study that JJ said was a little bit of a reaming after the Wright State game. Uh, I just wanted to know, you know, how much did that fuel you guys coming in today? And it seemed like you mentioned the energy level at the start was better. You, you guys kind of imposed your will from the opening tip. Yeah, no, and that's a phrase we use, impose your will. We wanted to do that. It was a little bit of a different film session than we've had uh, <laughs> a little bit earlier. We watched quite a bit of it. You know, I kind of told him, don't listen to my tone a little. I mean, take my tone a little bit when we were watching it, but still listen to the message more than anything else. And, you know, for us, we just haven't been – I mean, we need to hold them accountable. You know, and even for me, there may be times through that winning streak that, you know, I didn't do my part. And so I told him it was on me, it was on them, but I'm going to hold them accountable, and that's my job. And um, so we did that. And, uh you know, didn't get to get on the court as much two days ago after the game. So we really just decided we'd watch film and get better. And they took some great notes and they had some good thoughts and comments afterward. And their response was what you would want. And so kudos to them. Going back to the three-point shooting, four for 16 on Monday and then four for 21 tonight. Is there a way to kind of fix that? Or does it just have to make the open looks when you have no, I think for the most part, we're getting the right looks and the right people are getting the right looks. And so it's just, yeah, working through it. Lauren hadn't shot it great here lately, but she's worked hard to get through, you know, a little bit of that shooting slump. She made a couple today and had some really good looks at a few others. So as long as the right kids are getting them, that's what bas it's basketball. Um, you know, you kind of live with it. Now, at the same time, if you're not shooting it well, you need to find different ways to score the ball. So that's 
That's something we challenge them with. Don't just keep shooting if you're over, you know, four or five. Let's maybe go get a layup or get to the free throw line and then see the ball through. And then maybe the next time you touch it, you know, go ahead and shoot that three again. So lots of different ways to evaluate it. Um, not overly concerned about it, um, but we do need to shoot it at a better percentage for sure. You mentioned the fourth time in school history being 11 and 0. What, what does that mean to you? And I guess how do you relay the message to the girls that? It's an accomplishment, but obviously it's not something that you want to you know, rest on for too long. Yeah, well, I guess we get to – so one of the messages before the game was we're going to close the chapter today. So this is closing one chapter, and when we get back, we'll open the next chapter to the book. And, you know, the, you know, really the story that we're trying to write is what I talk about a lot is every year you have the blank book, and we get to write the story and kind of tell it how we want. And so as of now, we're closing these chapters, and we're 11-0, and 0 and – and it's, it's remarkable. It's a, we're a first year program with, you know, kids have been recruited by three different players, um, you know, but they've bought in. I think it's a system that fits this group for the most part pretty well. Um, we've gotten healthy at the right time. So we hadn't been as healthy in the fall, but now I think we've gotten healthy at the right time. Um, but I think we needed this break too at the same time. I think we've been, we've been grinded and going at it here for a while. Um, so much deserved and earned little break. Um, Hopefully they do a little bit of something on the break, though, so it uh, doesn't catch up with us uh, on the 26th when we get back. Coach, when you were talking about the, the depth of the Big 12, um, I think there's like 10 undefeated teams still left in women's basketball. I think four or five of them are in the Big 12. Uh, a portion of your player, you know, probably half the roster maybe, or some of the roster, you know, hasn't played in the you know Big 12. So, you know, how, how do you kind of get them ready for, the, for this gauntlet when they've never gone through it? Before? Yeah. If you haven't been through it, you can't experience. That's what experience is, right? So you can ask me or ask them. I don't know. I haven't been through it, but I've been through conference seasons. I know how hard it is, like I said, to win on the road and, and win in your league. Um, I've coached against Power 5 schools. We just haven't done it every Wednesday and Saturday. I know that's not always the schedule, but essentially two games every single week against that level of competition. So, you know, it's about being consistent, I think. That's what we've tried to do. We've had some peaks and valleys, and, you know, we've done this. But, you know, hopefully as the year goes, those get smaller, and then we kind of flatline it and start playing pretty consistent, you know, and at a high level. And there will be ups and downs. There will be those peaks and valleys, but we just need to limit the valleys as best we can. And um, I think if we do that, then we'll be in really good shape when we get to March. Have there been any surprises to you through the first 11 games? Oh, well, probably. Um, I think we've shot it a little bit better than I was expecting. Um, I don't know that we're a great rebounding team, but we're holding our own now. But I know that challenge is about to step up big time. Um, but really just them catching on, I think, and, and buying into you know some of the ball movement, the extra passes, the sharing of the basketball. Um, you know, I was a little worried about that coming in, so maybe surprised that we're moving it and, and they've bought into that philosophy. Um, you know, I thought we've come a long way with getting the ball in the paint. First two or three games, I didn't think we, you know, completely trusted everybody on the team. So I think our trust has grown. Um, yeah, and I keep getting more information every time. I keep saying that, but every time we play, I get a little more info on our team, and, and that only helps me kind of guide them and lead them. Ever since your win against Penn State, your team has been left out of the top 25. Would you say they're somewhat playing with a chip on their shoulder because you're 11 and 0 now, and you're still not in the top 25? Yeah, you know, I, you can only play the schedule in front of you, and I think we've done a pretty good job. You know, we've had two, I guess, kind of tighter games, but outside of that, we've done a pretty good job of taking care of business. I, I think we've earned the right, you know, and you look at some of the other metrics and some of the different, you know, rankings that, that people think we're a quality basketball team. So we just got to get that AP and those AP poll voters to, to think the same thing. And, uh, you know, we've been pretty close you know, and are pretty close, you know. And so, yeah, it's when it happens, it's going to happen. Do we play with a chip on our shoulder because of that? I don't know about that. But we know we're close, and we know it would mean a lot to get there, and then we know it's going to take a heck of a lot to, to stay in that thing. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, I guess, next Monday, and then there may be one more, I don't know, um, before we go to Kansas. Um, Jordan stat line tonight obviously looks pretty good until you get to the, the, the turnovers, but obviously she's been pretty good with that all year. So is this kind of like a, maybe a one game aberration or, or any concern there? Uh, no, it better be. Um, no, and you know, I've seen Jordan do, you know, not do this, but you know, play and play at a high level. And I think she just, the game probably dictated. She got a little sloppy. The score probably dictated some of the passes that she was, you know, trying to make or getting rid of it a little bit early. A little bit was their pressure too. So give Niagara some credit there. She threw it out of some traps that she probably didn't need to make that pass. Um, but no, I think she'll bounce back. That kid's tougher nails and, and she's disappointed. Um, and part of it, I wanted her to have to play through that a little bit today. And, you know, they kept pressing the whole night. So normally I would have probably taken her out with JJ, but just needed another ball handler in there to, to kind of finish it off. And she's the one that organizes us offensively and defensively. Is there a way that you can look at Monday's game and take positives out of it, even though I'm sure you would have liked to win 
more comfortable fashion, just kind of a, I guess, a recharge for a wake-up call type thing? Yeah, no, yeah, we got a lot out. I thought our response showed me that we took out of it what we needed to take out of it, right? The way we played today completely told me that we – you know, that we took um, the right state game and, and ran with it the way that I would expect them to. So uh, it can be. You still don't love it. And I think we dropped like eight points in the net after that game. So that's the disappointing part, you know, and that's based on efficiency and some of those things because we didn't play very efficient basketball. But again, it's it's going to happen. And we responded the right way. So um, proud from that standpoint. Yep, no doubt. You kind of talk about taking a little bit of a different tone after that game. Is that kind of the first time you've had to – do that with, with this bunch? And yeah, it really was. I mean, the George Washington game would have been similar, but we didn't have any time because we played so quickly behind it. So we didn't really get to, you know, sit down and break down the film. And, you know, sometimes we clip it up after that game. I didn't clip anything up. We sat there and we just watched the game, you know, as it went. Um, you know, and so, yeah, so, yeah, I got to kind of get after them. And, you know, it's never personal. It's just, you know, you, I can change my tone a little bit if I need to. And, you know, just to know the seriousness of it. And if we don't watch ourselves, we're going to mess around. And that could have easily been a you know, something close or a loss. And then we're learning from a loss. And then the tone's even considerably different if you lose than it was after a win. But they took it the right way, and that's what impressed me the most, yeah. Any more questions for Coach? Thank you.